are celebrating the third Sunday of the month, our celebrant and homeless is Father Pop, and joining us will also be Deacon Solario and Deacon Bruce. Please join us for our meeting. You shall not murder, 
You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The response is, Lord, you have words of eternal life. Lord, Lord you, you have, have words of eternal life. life. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. Lord, Lord you have words of eternal life. life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. Lord, Lord, you have the words of eternal life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, and righteous altogether. Lord, Lord you have the words of eternal life. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and drippings of the honeycomb. Lord, Lord you have the words of eternal life. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the message about the cross is foolish to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved it is the power of God. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks demand, desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. selling cattle, sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house of work a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. They then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. When he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to testify about human nature, for he himself knew what was within the human person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Today is the 
gather, we get confronted with a Jesus that's unusual for us. Genuinely, I think about Jesus and I think about a very compassionate person who's always had compassion for those who were wounded and sick and uh, wanting to heal and kind of having his arms open and a lovely embrace with people. But today we, we are confronted by a, an angry Jesus. And we know that Jesus didn't sin. So what kind of anger is this that Jesus had? See, I think when he came to the temple, he came expecting a place of common prayer, a place where people could have some peace and quiet, a place where they could be one with his Father in heaven. And of course, when he walked in and all these things were going on, he confronted them. Well, what is this kind of righteous anger? Because we often think of ourselves when we think about anger. You know, is there a good anger? Is there a healthy anger? Well, the question is, um, Abraham Lincoln was angry with slavery. Was that a healthy anger? Martin Luther King was angry with racial discrimination. Was that a healthy anger? Muhammad Gandhi was angry with racial discrimination against the untouchables, you know, the class system in India. And of course, when Nelson Mandela was angry at apartheid in South Africa. These are righteous angers. Often we can get righteously angry when we see someone being bullied or beaten, a younger child by an older child. Or when we see a thief stealing an old woman's purse. Or when a husband beats his wife. The list goes on and on and on. And for us, I guess in a sense we are wired with that anger that God created us. And in some way there is a healthy human anger that, uh, that we can be angry with evil and injustice. And we should be. And we should try to find a way to stand up for it. The problem is how to express it. Ah, there's where the struggle is. Aristotle has a wonderful quote. He says, anyone can be angry, but to be angry with the right person, to the right degree, at the right time, with the right purpose, this is not easy. <laughs> and I guess there's no truer words said. Eh? But today in the gospel, we get this notion of Jesus being angry because he sees this holy place being desecrated. And in a sense, I'm always kind of waffling with that here in the church about you know what's going on at the back of the church maybe people are getting a little too loud or, or all kinds of things are going on and somebody just wants to come in here and sit and pray because they just lost their wife or they just lost their husband or their children are in trouble and they just want a quiet place to pray and i'm always shushing people sometimes and they get all upset with me because they see that parish as a, a community of people gathering and we do we are that and we do need that kind of connection with one another. But at the same time, we also need to be open to the needs of our whole community. And there's a wonderful little joke that I think uh, kind of will help us to understand this a bit. Um, there was a man driving without a seatbelt on, and the police car spotted him and was right behind him. And he grabbed his belt and pulled her over and clipped it. And of course, it was too late. The red lights were going. And uh, when he pulled over, uh, the officer said, you weren't wearing your seatbelt, were you? Yes, I was, the man said. If you don't believe me, ask her. So he looked over and he says, uh, are you his wife? And she says, yes. And uh, he says, well, was he wearing his seatbelt? And she said, you know, I've been married to him for 40 years. And I, I learned a long time ago, never argue with him when he's drunk. <laughs> <laughs> never argue with him when he's drunk. And you know, in the same way in the gospel today, Jesus doesn't bother to argue with these unjust merchants. He doesn't argue with the merchants, the money changers, you know, or all the making noise in the temple and stuff. He doesn't do that. He kind of frightens them and sus with his anger as he turns over the tables and he makes a whip. And you know, in some sense, all of us struggle with this. You know, as we think about the opening prayer today in the gospel, or in the prayer, it said that the Lord has given us this time as a time of cleansing. 
It's a time of renewal. This Lent is a time where we do prayer, almsgiving, and fasting, and it helps us to kind of cleanse ourselves of struggles. And of course, we're halfway through Lent, so I would ask you the question, how are you guys doing? Everybody giving up early and doing really well and fighting along? And yeah, yeah, yeah. We do our best, and we can struggle. But doing these Lenten observances are, are important for us. Because in a sense, they're, they're looking at taking our own inner life, like that temple, and chasing out all of the stuff that's in there so that we can have a prayerful place and for the Father to dwell. And that's in a sense what the cleansing of the temple was all about. It was about cleansing our lives, giving us that invitation that the Lord will help us in that. So there's a purification or a purifying, I guess, of our souls and our hearts during this season. And as I think about anger, anger's a big part of my life these days, a much bigger part of my life than I would like to admit. But, and you know, it's funny because, uh, I won't say who, but someone said it to me the other day, and they said, well, you know, it's okay, you can be angry, you've got a right to be angry, you've got a lot of things going on. And I'm kind of going, no, no, I don't. <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay, I've got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, 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 I've got a lot of weakness, I've got a lot of struggle with the cancer and everything else. And, 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 but, but do I have a right to be angry? See, at the end of every day when I do the conscious exam, I look back at my day and I go, oh my God, do I have to apologize to somebody? Do I have to do this? Do I have to do that? And you know what? Lately, it's been a bigger struggle than before. How to deal with this anger? And you know, the question is, the definition of anger is annoyance, displeasure, you know? And I would say in my own life, it's about, I guess, being patient with myself. You know, my recovery is not going as fast as I would like it to. And of course, the truth is, my expectations of that recovery are far too high. I expect to be recovered in a week, you know? <laughs> and then I'm angry. That's foolishness. <laughs> it's foolishness. But it seems to be something that's kind of caught in me. And one of the great struggles, I think, with a justifiable anger it can be so dangerous to us. Because yes, you can have maybe some anger if it's appropriate. But most of the time when I get angry, it's out of tune. Somehow I'm out of tune with what's going on. Something's going wrong, you know? And anger can, can possess us. And that's the thing that, that kind of um, gets me every once in a while. It's like that story of the monks. I've told it before, but these two monks are traveling in silence and they're walking along and they come to the side of a river and there's a woman there who's obviously a welcome prostitute and she says, will you carry me across the river? One of the monks. He picks her up, carries her across the river, puts her down. Then they travel on for the rest of the day. And at dinner, they, they have their meal, they say their prayer, and then they're allowed to break silence for 20 minutes. And when they break silence, the one monk who didn't carry the other one across the river said, Why don't you carry the one? Why don't you carry the one? Why don't And the other monk just started laughing. He said, I don't want to carry it across the river. You've been carrying her all afternoon. <laughs> you know? We can do that so easily. We can carry our anger around. And I'm noticing that. It's hard for me to kind of break myself from that, I don't know, the disappointment and all the stuff that's going on in me to kind of put it aside so that I can start fresh the next day. Because I seem to carry all these physical difficulties with me from day to day, and they're not helping me. <laughs> but at the same time, I can't give myself permission. Because if I give myself permission, then it's going to get worse. It's not going to get better. <laughs> you know? One of the things about, um, about anger is that um, there was a wonderful quote years ago that said, um, uh, the quote was around anger. It said, do I want to be right or do I want to be happy? Do I want to be right or do I want to be happy? And you know, the truth is, that's why I love that statement, the truth will set you free. I am human. You are human. How many of us don't make mistakes? My hand's not up. <laughs> you know, we're human beings. We're full of frailty and brokenness and all kinds of stuff. And I often say to the parents, you know, when I'm talking to the kids, I said, 
we step on the toes of each other. Why? Because we get feet. We can't help it. We're human. Eh? And that's a problem. So for me to rise up for some sort of righteous anger is really dangerous. We need to let it go. None of us are perfect. This third week of Lent, if you're reminding me, as I'm trying to go through Lent, it's getting a little more difficult to struggle. I'm getting a little more reminded of, of how hard it is to struggle. Because what anger does, if we hold on to it, it often separates us from each other and separates me from love. Oh, doesn't anger just push the love right out of you? For what? Because I might be right in this little instant? You know, I found through the years I've been much more patient with other people's stuff and my own stuff. But now with all of this physical stuff, boy, it's hard. It's hard. And the truth is, I have to turn to the Lord. I have to seek out His forgiveness. I have to seek it out. And I have to offer an apology. So I'd like to apologize to anyone that my kind of stuff has been there with because, boy, I'm not my normal self these days. And the reason why I do that is because, you know, that wonderful story that came out of Spain years ago, there was a father who had a disagreement with his son, and his son left home, and, and his wife was all upset, and, and uh, he said, oh, don't worry, Paco will come home as soon as he gets hungry, and of course, the day goes by, Paco's not around. Two days goes by, crack was not around. And now mom's really frustrated with dad, and dad's going to look him because he's worried. Now. And he checks the local towns and stuff for them, all the people who might have known him. And then he goes into Lisbon, and he can't find him. And he goes, I gotta do something. So he, he put an ad in the local newspaper, and it said, Papa, all is forgiven. Your mom and dad, we forgive you. We want you to come home. Meet me at the fountain at 9 o'clock in the morning, and you can come home with us. And of course, he shows up at the fountain at 9 o'clock in the morning with his wife, really expectant, you know? And 760 Pacos show up that morning. So many of us need to give forgiveness and to accept forgiveness. To give love and to accept love. Put aside anger. Put aside all that stuff that gets in the way. Because boy, does it ever rob us from the peace that God intended for us. God wants us to have peace. Remember Jesus said that. Often he says, peace be with you. My peace be with you. And he wants us to have it. But boy, it's easy for us to let anger get in the way. And of course, it might not just be the sickness that's going on. I was thinking about it this morning. You know, on Tuesday I'm turning 65. No big birthday party or anything like that because we're all in lockdown. But at the same time, I'm not quite sure how I feel about turning 65. I don't, I don't have a big smile on my face thinking, oh, I'm 65, this is wonderful. You know, I'm kind of going, oh, right? <laughs> so there's a kind of, kind of sadness, I guess, in a sense there. But as I thought about it this morning, you know, God gave me life. And he gave you life. I've had 65 years of that wonderful gift of life. Am I making the most of it? There's the struggle. Am I making the most of it? Let us pray that during this time we can make the most of it. Make the most of the gifts of love around us. Make the most of His graces in our lives. He loves us so deeply. Let us now stand and profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died in spirit. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, there he will come, come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Gathered in prayer, 
let us bring all of our needs before God, confident that he will listen to our prayers and answer them with his grace and love and goodness. For Christians everywhere, that our houses of worship may be truly houses of prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our society, that the commandments of God may be respected by all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who worship false gods, such as power or riches or beauty, that they may come to know, love, and serve the true God. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That we may see our bodies as temples of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who continue their service to us all on the front lines of the COVID pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all our sick relatives and friends, we pray for those names listed in our bulletin sick list, especially Giuseppe G. Giannani, who is newly added, and Hugh Fox. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all our loved ones who have died, those who have died this past week, especially Jeannie Binda, and all those who rest in our cemeteries, for all of these we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, help us to make this house of prayer, make this house a place of prayer and of joy and of unity. And may our prayers help us to worship you with our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all this holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and the purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by the teaching we dare to say our father, father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name thy, thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the, the power, power, and the glory are yours, now and now forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of our Lord's love and peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, only say the word, and my soul shall be you. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Just a couple of brief announcements. Um, the tax receipts were mailed out. You should have got it by now, but if you don't get it within a week or so, let us know and we'll be sure to uh, send you a duplicate copy. Also, uh, just a reminder, um, we sent out uh, the readings for today and of course the stations across with our email address or our email list, our email bulletin list. Should get it. Then, um, uh, but we have the stations of the cross up on our YouTube channel, so it's a wonderful opportunity if you'd like to join us with that. Um, so keep that in mind. I want to thank you so much for your dedication to the poor. There were 86 chilies picked up this week, so I want to thank you for that. It's a great, uh, great dedication we do when we make those chili pans and they get sent down to the Good Shepherd and they they feed the people who are in most need living on the street. Um, I'd just like to remind you also that uh, next weekend is Daylight Savings, so be sure you get your clock back next weekend. And um, Lenten Confessions will be in the parish here, uh, Tuesday, March 16th, and Thursday, March 18th. Um, we're going to kind of uh, work out the times. So it will be in the bulletin next week, and we'll make an announcement about that. Uh, we're also trying to get our young people um, able to receive their first reconciliation in March, which would be really great this year. Um, I'm living in great hope, planning for First Communion in April, then confirmation in May, and I'm planning for it. Um, however, you know, they always say, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> so I have no earthly idea what it's going to be like. Um, however, there is great hope on the horizon that um, uh, things are improving, even though we're still in lockdown. And we just have to kind of hold our breath and, and hang on for the last little while. So thank you for that and thank you for your patience, especially with me, with all of my difficulties of the cancer recovery. And a um, uh, special thank you to Sylvia who sung so wonderfully today for our two deacons who are with us. It's a wonderful gift for Mallory who's filming and Kara for doing the reading and, and all of you for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for praying with us. It's a wonderful gift of family as we pray together and a gift of love that we receive from God and one another. Let us stand and pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth, with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us, in mystery, may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray the hearts of your faithful. In your kindness, grant your servants this grace that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 Go in peace and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Oh. Uh -huh.